not correct. Konda? This what I'm putting in Achha. is not an eyepiece. Okay. Anytime your scope is has a faster focal ratio than five, hmm. around four and a half or hmm. so, hmm. Uh, you get at the edge of uh, the eyepiece hmm. coma where stars which are supposed to be circular develop tails. Barar. And they look like comets. So that is because of the mirror being uh, parabolic. And this corrects that. Achha. So in a coma corrector, you put an eyepiece. I am going to see the moon. Just uh, to check the focusing. Hello everyone, this is Hemant Waule from Nisarga Shala and here I am introduce you to one of the citizen scientists, I can certainly say, uh, Captain Soman, Atul Soman and he is here with his big telescope and lot of other gears for you know, observation, stargazing and everything. So let's have a quick chat with Captain Sir. Namaste, sir. Good evening. Yes, so what is this? This is a 16 inch reflector telescope with a Dobsonian base, which I use out of Nisam Shaya for uh, deep space observation. Uh, very far off dim galaxies. Uh, for example, yesterday uh, I uh, happened to see the farthest object. Uh, which is generally possible at our level of astronomy, that is amateur astronomy. And that is a quasar. It's a quasar in Virgo called 3C273. And it is two and a half billion light years away, not million, billion. So it takes time to find that. It's a very, very distant object. The most distant object, in fact, the first quasar which was discovered. And that has only been possible because of the nice and uh, relatively less light polluted sky at Nisad Shaya. Uh, another very, I have been all over, but uh, I stay in Pune, but I find Nisad Shaya to be a very uh, astronomy conducive place. One of the main reasons is the concrete base here, which is level, and uh, there being a lot of dew, uh, there is no uh, mud or any uh, sort of uh, mess in the morning after a whole night of dew. And apart from that, the surrounding, the environs are also very conducive. They are very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, stable. The night is stable. Uh, there are two things in astronomy, seeing and transparency. Uh, seeing is where uh, the air stability that is due to turbulence, that matters and uh, transparency is the pollution, either the uh, clouds or smog or fog or mist and both are relatively less here, so eventually you have a very good experience. Alright, as you said, ki relatively less light polluted area, uh, this, this area is less light polluted. So. What does it exactly mean? Means when it, how, how do you a, compare it? There is a scale, a bottle <coughs> scale, bottle one to nine. Nisakshala officially falls in bottle three, but uh, that data is from 2015. So you can expect a bottle four to bottle five here. And in fact, my sky quality meter last night showed a reading of 20.9, uh, which is pretty decent for this kind of observation. And uh, for example, a bottle one, like Hanley in Ladakh is 21.9, 21.95. And uh, these readings are with a SQM, a sky quality meter, which gives it in uh, milli uh, arcs per second square, MPSAS. That's the uh, unit okay. with which sky quality is uh, measured. 
All right. Okay. And uh, what do you do the whole night? Means, are you going to stay awake the whole? I have a whole? plan. Every observation has a plan. The plan takes uh, a week's worth of preparation. It can either be planetary nebulae, it can be reflection nebulae, it can be uh, dark nebulae, uh, galaxies, and uh, any type of object which you want to see, which is deep space. And uh, deep space is anything outside our solar system. So all these objects require a plan to view. They rise in the east, set in the west because the Earth rotates from west to east. And so you have to plan it so that you time it and see it towards the zenith, which is near the vertical. Because when you see objects near the vertical, it is less atmosphere to deal with, less pollution. And uh, that is the best view you will get. So there are certain objects which take months and years to uh, find. For example, I was uh, looking for uh, the pup that is Sirius. Uh, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky at eight light years away. And uh, it is known as the dog star in Canis Major. And it has a bi it's a binary star. It has a companion which rotates around it once every 50 years. And it so happens that in our era, it is the closest. It's about 11 uh, light arc seconds away from Sirius. And it is in an elliptical orbit. So it is right now at a position where you can see it, but it takes years, it takes a good sky, it takes good equipment and uh, I happened to see that about a week back. So that is another one of those things in astronomy just like in wildlife where you go chasing for a very uh, exotic rare animal or a bird. So similarly in astronomy uh, we are looking for objects which are difficult to find and not only the ones which are beautiful like uh, the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, etc. <laughs> All right, great. So, like I can see that you've got a really, really big telescope and uh, it's, you know, quite bulky as well. So, yes. how do you manage to get it here? It has to be dismantled. It's a truss design. So, there are six uh, tubes here, <coughs> carbon fiber tubes. So, these come out. There is a crown which uh, houses the eyepiece and the viewfinder and a base, the Dobsonian base. So all this comes apart and requires a dedicated uh, car to go in. Oh. Uh, I had to remove the rear seat of my car and so I have to drive another car and basically this is a two-man, two-car job. It is impossible for one person to set up such uh, equipment which is about uh, 80 kilos. The entire the scope weighs about 80 kilos but the view you get from it uh, the combination of the sky above the optics of the telescope and the eyepieces you use are literally out of this world and well worth all the effort oh, so it means you've dedicated one car only for the telescope yes yes this, and this particular telescope okay and the time when you're there at the city in the city your car is there as it is yes when I housing the central, telescope it goes in the garage sits there and uh, i am here in nisarkshala every month around new moon amausya it is uh, plus minus 3 to 4 days uh, around amausya uh, where astronomy is at its best because of no light pollution from the moon mm -hmm. and uh, when i come the car comes we it takes about an hour hour and a half to set up the whole uh, show here and uh, as you said it's a dedicated car fantastic fantastic so like you also have seen a lot of people coming here for stargazing and you know they get fascinated they get amazed by looking at the stars the deep sky objects sometimes nebulae so and they have certain questions ki i also want to buy a telescope it means means they they get fascinated and they might get carried away so you have something to tell them from your own experience ki how to gradually get into astronomy, deep sky observations. It's, it's a multifaceted answer, multi-phased answer, but to keep things simple, go for a Dobsonian 8-inch reflector telescope with basic low power and high power eyepieces. Enjoy the night sky because you can complicate matters there are reflector telescopes, there are refractor telescopes, 
there are schmidt cassegrain telescopes maksutov telescopes different sizes different focal lengths and uh, it's a very complicated field but okay. keep things simple enjoy get an 8 inch reflector dobsonian it this is recommended by amateur astronomers all over the world you will enjoy and have a lot of memories and stories to tell and if you want any more information feel free to call or message me on whatsapp and i'm uh, more than happy to help fantastic thank you captain sir uh, awesome. hope you have great night ahead with stars yes. mm-hmm. tonight uh, the plan is uh, for markarian's chain it was a astronomer which discovered a group of galaxies uh, about 12 to 13 galaxies all moving through space at the same time in the same vicinity so he discovered after calculations that these are gravitationally bound his name was markarian and that's why it is known as markarian's chain uh your camera is facing west but tonight approximately 2:30 at 3 between 2:30 at 3 in the morning this chain will be available in the east at about 30 to 40 degrees altitude and i hope to see all 12 of them oh fantastic wonderful we can just dream of such things but that dream is a reality at nisar shah wow great great thank you so much welcome bye bye